How's it going everybody? I have a bit of an unusual one today. You know, it didn't it gave us some pretty serious fits. But we're coming in to do a vacuum and startup process on a chiller that had previously been repaired by another contractor for the leak. The chiller had a couple of minor leaks, but there was a major leak at the rear bearing oil inlet on the top of the motor. With the busy schedules and such this summer, we did miss the opportunity to initially do the repairs, but thankfully the customer gave us an opportunity to come in, do the vacuum, and finish it out from there. Getting on site, you know, our first steps is to get our vacuum set up and release that nitrogen pressure from the pressure test, get it out of the system. The pressure did hold for a full week with no issues, which is fairly aggressive time frame, uh, but we really wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to have any problems and that we had the extreme confidence to say that this had fully sealed the system. I have been using the Navic NRD24M as my centrifugal vacuum. It has proven absolutely amazing, comboed with the blue vac hose and gauge as well. They're wonderful. I do have links in the description to True Tech Tools with promo code HVAC time if you want some savings on those. So on this evacuation, I decided to use the half inch port at the bottom of the EVAP instead of adapting down to the larger recovery port on the back side under the condenser. The T fitting on top where the region return line is, that is not factory by the way. I filled install these so that I have an easy access port to get to. The older machines actually had a valve on top of the EVAP right there you could use, but the newer ones don't. I just adapt it there at the return line. With the nitro out and everything prepped, we finished hooking up our vacuum pump to get that sucker spinning. I do like to nylog all my caps and ports on my machines as just part of my evacuation prep process. The cap on the valve I'll be using though was very corroded and I did not want to trust that, even with nylog. So we, I do recommend using like a little small cone uh, metal brush to get in there to clean those a lot easier. Ultimately, we may do with what we had on site without having to make a special trip. The vacuum pulled really well at first and it was honestly starting to look a little too easy. The kind of easy that you just know is it's just not going to be that way. But I was having some fun on site with my little thermal camera that plugs into my phone. And I have since gotten a new thermal camera, so stay tuned for that. And if you find yourself needing some tech support in any way, whether it be commercial or otherwise big or small, reach out to me at techsupport at hvactimetx.com. So we let this first vacuum pull overnight, and we came back in the next morning, and it was at 2,500 microns, which was unexpected because of how well it was pulling the day before, genuinely thought we'd be significantly lower than that. Looking at this though, we decided that we were going to do a triple evacuation on the system, as it just looks like it may have gotten stalled out for whatever reason. We know there's a heavy moisture load from the leaks that were there. After isolating the vacuum pump, we were able to charge nitrogen back into the system through the top of the condenser to help break the vacuum and prepare for the second pull. And after breaking the vacuum, I made sure to actually use my gas ballast this time on the pump. It's not something I've had a good habit of using in the past. I didn't use it on the first one. Being the fact we had fresh oil in there, I, I wanted to try to protect it as much as I could. Here's where things really began to get interesting. So with the second pull overnight, we came back and we had only pulled down to 5,000 microns on the second one, which didn't make any sense. And at this point, just, just something told us that, that that couldn't be right. So the technician I was working with actually had a, his own blue vac gauge and we were able to go over to the condenser valve we've been putting nitro into. And sure enough, we had 380 microns. Seeing that something wasn't right there, we ended up looking into that return line valve there on top of the EVAP to see what was going on. And we did figure out that, yeah, it's plugged up and it's not reading proper evaporator pressure the way that it normally would. And when we took the lines apart, we could see where the internals of it had really heavy corrosion, even so much so that we decided to replace the T-fitting that I had originally installed a number of years ago. So at first we just tried to pressurize the chiller and see if we could push the blockage back out the way it came in, but we didn't have any luck with that. And we were only getting a tiny whisper of pressure actually through the valve, so it was next to nothing at all. So our very next attempt was to push from the top down into the, the barrel. I mean, we had 500 PSI on our nitro, but even with that it still wasn't moving. We, we were not getting flow through it. 
I even loosened the packing nut some and then tried to stick a little wire down in there to see if I could just get something to clear. It wouldn't go. So I do not recommend this process, but we fix it. What we did, obviously we cut all this out. We got the building on fire test. We took our bit of mat gas. I uh, put a rag on the top of the valve, got all this bottom heated up. And then we just kind of shocked the whole shell and around the stem there. And we started to get a little more flow out of it. And then I back hit it with the nitrogen pressure, uh, which is about three, 400 PSI. And we finally got it to release and it blow out. Now we got full blow. Fantastic. With the clog finally cleared, we were able to move on and try to get the system pulled down. By the next morning, our goals were achieved of 350 microns. But four hours into our standing vacuum test, we were up to 1100 microns and climbing. So I needed to determine, was this a moisture issue or a leak? So I left the vacuum to sit overnight and see what the results were by the next morning. Once we got there, they had risen to 2100 microns and stopped, which is actually a good thing. It's a positive. What that tells us is that it is a moisture issue Moisture is going to react that way and it's going to get about that range. So after I broke the vacuum again, I opened up the drain port for recovery on the bottom of the EVAP and I just wanted to make sure we didn't have any standing water. Thankfully we didn't. So we decided to just purge the chiller with nitrogen to help remove the moisture. I have done a separate video detailing this moisture removal process. So if you haven't seen that, I really encourage you to go check that out. After purging the chiller for a full day, we were finally ready to start our fourth evacuation to try to pull the system down. We decided to let it run over the weekend at that to just get as much as it can. And sure enough, we came back in on Monday morning. We were at 255 microns. And we did our standing test and we never got above 500. It's fantastic. So it's finally time to start charging the system. It was 200 pounds short when the previous contractor recovered it. So we bought the large bulk drums of the 100 pounds to replenish the 123 that had been lost. So these drums are the first thing I wanna add because I want this vacuum to help me draw as much as I can into the chiller. I don't have any other push-pull options or anything else with this. So this is gonna be the fastest process. Now there's two ports on these drums. Um, I use the smaller port with the three quarter inch NPT threading, able to just do a quick hand swap, thread the adapter in, get it hooked up to our chiller and just flow it in. Now make sure anytime you're charging refrigerant or recovering, you always have to flow water or drain the tube so you don't risk freezing them. What you're really trying to do is you're needing to get your refrigerant saturation pressure high enough that it's not going to cause any kind of freezing. So that's really, that's really where you get yourself in trouble is the saturation temperature will be too low and that is what will allow your water in the tubes to freeze. So I am in no way condoning using this for this. This is purely me just experimenting. I have used the G5 Twin for low pressure charging before with success, but we're doing a push-pull out the top of the EVAP, into the recovery, out into our first tank, and then we're going to do a tank-to-tank -tank charge. So right now, I turned it on and I purged this line. I'm currently pushing into this tank, and my goal is to start seeing positive pressure build. As I see a couple of, or as I get a couple of PSI on there, we will then open the liquid port and bleed it over to minimize the atmosphere. And then uh, at that stage, we'll be able to open this valve, build pressure in the tank, bleed it, open, build pressure, bleed it, open. And this tank is already still in the charging process. So we finished the initial charging of the liquid. How we knew we finished was when we came over, our line had stopped jumping. And here on our output, we went from running about 6 PSI to 0 PSI. And we were maintaining about a negative 13 on the uh, suction, where we had been running about 14 on the machine. So those combinations told us, all right, we're done with the liquid. Now we've switched over to the vapor side. So essentially, we've swapped our hoses around, and we're just pulling back through the tanks. 
and we're pushing into this suction valve here, or on the suction elbow, I should say. Now, one thing I did adjust and I don't think I showed you initially was I started off trying to pull from the top of the evaporator. The issue is my little T there. Now, this is my personal T. This is not something the factory does, but my little T has a depressor in it. And so it wasn't able to get as much volume. So I ended up moving over there to the condenser valve. And from the condenser valve, we had much better flow. So we went from running a negative 15.5 or so to able to stabilize at a uh, 13 and a half to 14, pulling off the top of the condenser barrel. And it's strictly because we had better flow. We're still pulling vapor either way, but we had a, we had a more open flow path that way. No depressor, no other things in the way. Anyway, we moved 750 pounds of 123 in five hours. Completely cleared the liquid out of here and we're well on our way of finishing off the vapor that's left in this tank. With the system charged, purge filter, oil filter changed, by the way, separate videos on those. At last, the CVHF centrifugal that we've been working on is ready for startup. We left the purge unit to just run overnight to help just clean up whatever it can as much as it could because the system had a very significant leak prior and we really hadn't done a whole lot to process the refrigerant. We knew it was going to have a heavy atmospheric load regardless. But I am going to make the startup process on this chiller a separate video just for the sake of time and it became its own crazy process in and of itself. We had to go through quite a lot. So be looking for that. And let me know if you enjoyed this format. Let me know if you really had fun with this. Is this something you're interested in any more of? And allowing me to be a little less worried about engaging with the camera on site and more about just making it an extension of me and then coming back in here afterwards and kind of retelling the story while you see everything as I saw it as I went. Very curious as to your input to this style of creating. With that, MTT everybody, take care of yourself, take care of your family, spend time with your spouse, stay safe out there, I'll see you around.